friends, good afternoon to you all. So, once again welcome back to advanced mathematics 2. Friends, I hope yesterday uh, we have discussed uh, various points, right. So, before uh, starting to the next point, so I wanted to recall whatever we have discussed in the last session. Friends, I hope uh, you know that yesterday I uh, have begin with uh, the title factor algebra and uh, I have given a uh, various uh, basic uh, definitions before defining the factor right. So, and after that uh, I have used one or two examples of uh, real world problems right. So, uh, along with that uh, we have also discussed uh, why we want to study a vector or vector algebra as okay. and uh, I think uh, we have compared vector algebra with the previous topics. Previous topics means uh, whatever we have studied in the previous classes as okay. and then I think I have given a history of uh, vectors right from beginning various uh, great mathematicians and uh, scientists contribution to the vector as okay. And after that, uh, we have discussed about types of vectors, as a clear, right. We have defined a vector and we have uh, separated the scalar quantity and we have separated the vector quantity, then we have typed various types of vectors, namely a 0 vector, how do you define a 0 vector, how do you define a unit vector, how do you define uh, equal of 2 vectors, as a clear, co initial vectors. Right. So, uh, collinear factors, negative of a factor as it is. And after that, at the end of the last session, I have given a brief idea about addition of two factors as it is. Right. So, I think uh, we have discussed these points in the last session. Right. So, today I have planned to continue the same thing. The same thing means, so I wanted to give some more idea about addition of uh, factors as a clear right and uh, properties of uh, factors. So, we are already familiar with a uh, uh, commutative law, we are already familiar with uh, associative law as a clear. It means that uh, suppose if they give two factors, uh, how do you define a commutative law in the factor algebra or if they give three different uh, factors uh, namely A, B and C, how do you define a commutative law? in factor algebra, so etcetera, etcetera. And along with uh, these things, uh, I have planned with uh, a multiplication of a factor. They have given a vector, now I want to multiply a vector into a scalar quantity, is it clear? Then how do we define? Along with that, uh, so we want to discuss with uh, unit factors in two and three dimensions, is it clear? Right? So, how do we define unit factors in two dimensions as well as uh, three dimensions? Right. So, along with uh, this, uh, we want to define a components of a factor in two dimensions uh, as well as uh, three dimensions. Uh, right. And uh, I have planned to solve some examples about uh, all these uh, things. Is it clear? Right. So, friends, uh, as I have mentioned, yesterday we have defined addition of uh, factors. Uh, is it clear? Right. As I, as we know that uh, we have studied various operations uh, in uh, algebra. Is it clear? addition of two numbers, multiplication of two numbers as a clear. So, like that we want to operate addition or we want to use addition operator in vector algebra as a clear. Now, as you are observing here 5 plus 5 can be write down 10 right, 5 plus of minus is equal to 0. So, you can observe the direction of the vector as a clear. This is one the direction, as the, uh, it is exactly an opposite direction. If you add such a type of factors, I hope you will get a 0 as a clear. So, 5 plus of minus 10 as a clear means the magnitude of this vector is a minus 10, the magnitude of this vector is a 5. If you add these two factors, I hope you will get a minus 5 as a clear. And similarly, the magnitude of this vector is 10 plus of minus 5 is equal to I hope you will get a 5 right directions of these two vectors are opposite as a clear. I hope we have discussed these things in the last session 
right. So, now I want to apply the same concept to an application is it clear. Now, how do we use uh, addition concept for a application is it clear right. So, these rules for summing factors were applied to free body diagrams in order to determine the net force right. The net force means the factor sum of all individual forces. Sample applications are shown in the following diagram is it clear. You assume that it is a free body we are applying forces in two different directions. So, one is upward direction another one is downward direction right. So, here they have given the force what is the force 1200 Newton upward direction force we are applying right. Similarly, 800 Newton in the downward direction right. Our aim is to calculate what is the net force on the body is it clear right. So, here why cannot we can use addition operation as well. If you add these two numbers, I hope you will get a net force as well. What is the net force? 400 Newton in the upward direction because one is positive, another one is negative as well. What we have discussed yesterday, right. So, you will get a 400 Newton upward direction net force or in the similar way, we can apply a force in this direction upward direction 600 Newton downward direction 800 Newton. Here also we want to calculate net force. How do we calculate net force? Simply you can add these two numbers right. I hope you will get the net force right 800 plus 600. So, once again you will get an opposite sign. So, that is why you will get 200 Newton downward means we have to write 800 plus of minus 600 is equal to you will get 200 a Newton downward direction force right. And similarly, sometimes we have to apply the force in this type upward direction, downward direction as well as a left side as clear. Now, here you can observe the force 50 Newton in the upward direction, 50 Newton in the downward direction, 20 Newton in the left side. As clear. So, when we add these three factors, I hope you will get net force is 20 Newton because one becomes plus, another one becomes minus, it becomes 0, then you will get 20 net force. As clear. So, like that, we can use addition of two factors to an application. As clear, right. So, I hope it is understood. In the similar way, all of us are know that or all of us are familiar with Pythagorean theorem because we are using this theorem since from high school as a clear right. So, now I want to use the Pythagorean, Pythagoras theorem or Pythagorean theorem in the factor algebra right. So, you will come to know how do we use this theorem in a factor algebra in a minute right. The Pythagorean theorem is a useful method for determining the result of adding 2 means only 2 we cannot add more than 2 factors using this theorem as a clear. So, that makes a right angle to each other this method is not applicable for adding more than 2 factors or for adding factors that are not at 90 degrees to each other right. The Pythagorean theorem is a mathematical equation that relates the length of the sides of a right triangle to the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle as clear. Say for example, you can take this is one factor and this one is another factor you may call it as an A and B these two are the factor. So, this angle is a 90 degree as clear right. So, how do we add A square plus b square is equal to c square as a clear sum of these two sides is equal to the hypotenuse that is equal to c square what we have studied in the previous class. So, now I want to use this concept to solve a particular problem as a clear particular problem means we can consider a simple real world problem right we want to use Pythagoras theorem right. So, consider the following problem Eric a name of a person leaves the base camp and hikes 11 kilometer north. I hope friends you know the meaning of hikes. Hikes means 
uh, a people can go for a long walking as clear right so 11 kilometer north and then hikes 11 kilometer east right determine eric's resulting displacement right this problem asks you to determine the result of adding two displacement factors as clear you can take 11 kilometer north side one factor 11 kilometer east is another factor right that are at right angles to each other right the result or a resultant of walking 11 kilometer north 11 kilometer east is a factor directed as shown in the diagram so it means so you can represent ad, uh, factors in this form 11 kilometers north 11 kilometer east as clear you can note down 11 kilometer north 11 kilometer east as clear right so since the northward displacement and the eastward displacement are at right angles to each other the pythagorean theorem can be used to determine the resultant right means the hypotenuse of the right triangle as clear right so now you can take it as a one side other side now you want to calculate the value of r as clear using the pythagoras theorem right so you may take it as an a square b square is equal to c square just now we have observed as clear in the similar way you can take 11 square plus 11 square that is equal to r square what i have written here as clear i hope you can simplify so you will get 242 is equal to r square right or you can find out the value of r that is equal to i hope you will get 15.6 that is the result of adding a 11 kilometer north plus 11 kilometer east is a factor with magnitude of 15.6 kilometer is it clear so like that so you can use pythagoras theorem to solve a factor based problems is it clear right so now or i want to put the same addition of factors by considering another situation is it clear right so say for example a factor a b so a b is the factor simply means the displacement from a point a to the point b so we call it as an it is a displacement from this point to this point as clear now you can consider a situation that a girl moving from a to b and from b to c as clear girl moving from a to b and b to c as clear the net displacement made by the girl from a point a to point c is given by the factor a c and expressed as a c is equal to a b plus b c as clear so i want to find out a c how do you find out a c using a b plus b c i hope you will get the value of a c right so this law is called triangle of addition so you have to remember this law so many times we are going to use this law right or in general we can define addition of two factors as follows is it clear right so if we have two factors a is one factor right so b is another factor b and a right then add to them now we want to add to them it means what actually what is the statement of uh, addition of two factors you may ask is it clear right so you can say that they are positioned so that the initial point of one coincides with the terminal point of the other is it clear i want to repeat the same thing once again they are positioned so that the initial point of one coincides with the terminal points of the other is it clear i hope in this vector so this is the initial point and this is the terminal point in this vector initial point and terminal point so what we have defined yesterday is it clear right so now uh, we have shifted vector b i want to shift the vector b without changing its magnitude and direction so that its initial point coincides with the terminal point of a is it clear this is the vector a initial point terminal point is it clear then you can obtain 
a plus b is clear? represented by the third side namely a c of the triangle a b c is clear? gives the sum of the factors a and b that is in triangle a b c we have a b plus b c is equal to a c is clear i hope we can obtain the resultant factor namely a plus b right or uh, since a c is equal to minus times of c a you can change the direction of a c is clear suppose if we consider like this a b right plus b c plus a c is clear that is equal to it becomes uh, this point you may call it as an a a that is equal to a null factor it means that uh, when the sides of a triangle are taken in order it leads to zero resultant as the initial and terminal points get coincided i hope you'll get a particular point that should be noted down is it clear right or uh, you can construct a vector bc so that its magnitude is same as the vector bc but the direction opposite to that of it you can write on bc is equal to minus times of bc where is the bc right name of the vector is b is it clear right now applying triangle law from the diagram we have ac dash is equal to now i want to calculate this point is a and this point is a c dash ac dash is equal to ab plus bc dash is it clear this vector is a this vector is minus b and b into c is called as a b vector a b and minus times of b because it is a opposite direction is it clear now i want to consider ac dash is equal to ab plus bc dash so what will get a vector a plus of minus b or simply you can write on a minus of b is it clear i hope you'll get a difference of two factors that's why we call it as an vector ac is said to represent the difference of a and b or symbolically you can write on like this is it clear i hope friends uh, now you are able to add any two factors or you can subtract any two factors is it clear so now we can consider another uh, situation uh, like this consider a boat in a river going from one bank of the river to the other in a direction perpendicular to the flow of the river is it clear right so here boat want to move from one bank to another bank is it clear right so it is acted upon by two velocity factor is it clear then we have to observe in this situation how many velocity factors are acting two velocity factors are acting so one in the velocity imparted to the boat by its engine is it clear and other one is the velocity of the flow of a river water right so under this simultaneous influence of these two velocities the boat in actual starts traveling with a, a different velocity right to have a precise idea about the effective speed and direction of the boat we have the following law of factor addition right so it means that uh, is it possible to write down this situation mathematically or graphically yes it is possible then how do we write this situation graphically right so you will come to now if you have two factors namely a and b represented by the two adjacent sides as clear right you can note down this factor is called a and this factor ob is called b right so we call it as an adjacent sides of a parallelogram in magnitude and direction then the sum a plus b sum a plus b means oc that is equal to you get a plus b right is in magnitude and direction by the diagonal of the parallelogram through their common point right so this is known as a parallel 
Gram law of factor addition. Is it clear? I hope you can consider O A plus A C is equal to O C. I hope you will get A plus B or you can write down like this as I have mentioned O A plus A C is equal to O C or O A plus O B is it clear because A C is equal to O B right. So, A C is equal to O B it is a parallelogram is it clear these two sides are equal right. So, that is why you can write down O A plus O B is equal to O C right which is parallelogram law. Thus, we may say that two laws of factor addition are equivalent to each other right it should be noted down. So, now we want to move into the properties of factor addition because we are able to add any two factors we are able to subtract any two factors. Sometimes we have to verify A plus B means A is a factor B is another factor is equal to B plus A is it true or not or this type of law uh, we call it as an commutative law as a clear right. So, we can prove uh, very easily right. So, consider the parallelogram A B C D A B C D it is a parallelogram as a clear and you know that A B is what A B is a factor how do you denote this factor by using a, this letter as a clear. So, B C is a factor right how do you denote this factor using this letter B C is equal to B right and D C is a also a factor it is denoted by A right A D is also a factor it is also denoted by B right. So, now you can denote all these factors and we know that it is a parallelogram what I have written here A B is equal to B C is equal to right. So, what about A C right A C is a sum of these two sides A B plus B C that is equal to A C I hope you will get a plus B is it clear. Now, since the opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal and parallel right that is why you can say that A D is equal to B C A D is equal to B C that is equal to B and D C is equal to A B is equal to A right. So, using the triangle law A D C is it clear. So, A C is equal to A D plus D C right A C is equal to A D plus D C and this is equal to I hope you will get a B plus A right. Sometimes we say that A C is equal to A B and A C is equal to B A. So, therefore, A B is equal to B plus A it is true right. I hope using this parallelogram uh, diagram you can very easily prove that A plus B is equal to B plus A right. In the similar way suppose if they give three vectors namely A, B and C right. So, you want to verify associative property. So, what is the associative property sum of two factors namely A and B plus another factor say C that is equal to A plus sum of two factors namely B and C. So, we want to prove left hand side is equal to right hand side. So, how do we prove? Okay. I hope we need this diagram to prove uh, left hand side is equal to right hand side. Now, as usual you can take so P Q is a factor as a clear you may call it as an A right and uh, namely so Q R is also a factor call it as an B right. So, you can use the triangle law so P Q plus Q R is equal to P R as a clear how do you write P Q means A Q R means B so, that is equal to P R A plus B. I hope you will get this vector is it clear right. So, in the similar way once again you can use the same law triangle law right. So, P R is A plus B then you can use R S is C then you want to calculate P S is it clear. So, P R plus R S is equal to P S then what will get A plus B plus C that is the side P S is it clear. So, you can write down these things in the form of words right and similarly you want to prove another side A plus B plus C right. So, you can consider so Q Q R is factor B sorry 
PQ is A and QR is B and so this vector S into R is called C. Is it clear? Right. So now you want to prove that QR is B. Is it clear? And this vector is C. I hope you'll get BC. Right. Then you may say that so PQ, right, plus QR. That is equal to PS. I hope you'll get A plus B plus C. Right. So you can write on the same thing a plus b plus c is equal to p q plus q s is equal to s right. So, therefore, from these two equations you can write on a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c means associative law holds good right. So, in the similar way uh, we can uh, multiply by a vector by a scalar as clear. So, you can take any vector a then uh, choose a scalar say lambda then the product of the factor A by the scalar lambda it is denoted by lambda into A right. So, it is called the multiplication of a factor A by a scalar lambda. Say for example, you can take lambda is equal to 2 as clear. So, A is any factor then you can multiply 2 times of A right or you can take any other number you can multiply that number into a factor. Is it clear? Note that uh, lambda into a is also a factor. Is it clear? Okay, we will multiply two into a, then we will get a, a result. Then we have to decide, decide whether is it a scalar quantity or a factor quantity. There is no doubt about it. So we will get a factor quantity. Lambda into a is also a factor, right? Collinear to the factor a, right? The factor lambda into a has the direction. Sometimes it may be same, sometimes it may be opposite. Is it clear? Then you may ask, how do we come to know that whether direction remains the same or direction opposite? Is it clear? How do we say that direction changes? Is it clear? That depends upon lambda. Is it clear? Right? Whether it is a positive or a negative. Is it clear? Also, the magnitude of a factor lambda is you can write on modulus of lambda times the magnitude of the factor A. It means that suppose if you want to calculate a modulus of multiplication of a factor by a scalar, how do you write a modulus of lambda into A? That is equal to modulus of lambda into modulus of factor. Right? Or geometrically, we can represent multiplication of a factor by multiplication of a factor by a scalar right as follows right so for example a is the given factor now i want to multiply lambda into a here i have taken or you can choose lambda is equal to 1 by 2 as clear so this is the length of the given factor right if i multiply 1 by 2 into a i hope you'll get a half of the given factor you'll get this much of factor right and this is the given vector if i multiply by 2 right so what i will get 2 times of a as clear you can observe the length i hope you can double the length of the given vector as clear when you multiply 2 into a you can obtain this factor similarly sometimes if you multiply by a negative number as clear right minus times of 1 by 2 into a and you can observe we have already obtained 1 by 2 into a and you can obtain this factor you will get a similar factor but the direction is opposite as clear or sometimes instead of multiplying 2 if you multiply by minus 2 as clear i hope we can obtain this factor right so magnitude is same but the direction may be opposite so like that you can multiply a given vector by any scalar then you can note down either geometrically or analytically is it clear right so suppose when lambda is equal to minus 1 then lambda into a is equal to minus times of a which is also a factor having a magnitude equal to the magnitude of a as i have mentioned just now magnitude will not change but direction opposite to that of the direction of a 
this uh, should be noted down as clear the vector minus times of a is called a negative of a vector a and uh, we always have a plus of minus a or you can write on minus times of a plus a is equal to you will get a 0 vector as a clear right also lambda is equal to 1 divided by modulus of a provided a is not equal to 0 means a is not an null vector or 0 vector. So, in that case you can take lambda is equal to 1 by a vector right or uh, modulus of lambda into a is equal to you can just now I have mentioned you can write on modulus of lambda into modulus of a. So, that is equal to so we know that uh, lambda can be replaced by 1 divided by modulus of a as a clear into a right that is equal to 1 right. So, that uh, lambda into a represents a unit vector in the direction of a right and we write it as a hat that is equal to 1 divided by modulus of a into a. So, why I am giving all these things now? So, simply uh, they will give a vector sometimes uh, they will ask you to calculate the modulus of the given vector as clear. Then we need a formula now how do we calculate uh, modulus of the given vector as clear or simply they will give the vector as clear and they will ask you to calculate uh, unit vector. How do we calculate unit vector? Here you can uh, use uh, this uh, formula for calculating a uh, unit vector as clear. It is understood that uh, for any scalar k, k into 0 vector is equal to 0 right. <coughs> So, here you can consider this situation, uh, situation may be like this, uh, an aeroplane starts from an airport located at the origin O right and flies 150 miles in the direction of 20 degree north of east of city A. Is it clear? From A, the aeroplane then flies 200 miles in the direction 23 degree west of north to the city B. From B, the aeroplane flies 240 miles in the direction of 10 degree south of west to the sorry to city C. Express the location of city C as a vector as a clear right. So, nowadays we will observe situations like this actually it is a word problem right. So, now we want to write down geometrically sorry geometric uh, or you want to write down the same word in the uh, form of a graph or geometrically how do we represent uh, this problem right. So, you can represent uh, geometrically in this uh, form. So, O is the origin or initial position of the flight uh, as clear according to the data it is located at O and it flies 150 degree in the direction of 20 degree north of east as clear here we have mentioned north n means north east south west as clear so, you want to make a 20 degree north east right so flight flies will from o to a city a as clear again it will fly as clear with the 23 degree west of north as a clear you can make an angle 20 degree and it will reach the city B right. So, finally, it will fly with uh, some speed 10 degree south of west right here you want to make south of west 10 degree then it will fly B to city B to city C as a clear then O A it represents a factor and it is also possible to calculate the distance between O and C as a clear etcetera etcetera right. I hope now you are able to represent that problem in the form of a graph as a clear. So, now we want to discuss about position vector as a clear right. So, you may think about what do you mean by a position vector or how do you define a position vector as a clear. Right. If O is the origin, now you can consider this is an x axis and this line is an y axis. So, O is the 
origin the coordinates of origin are 0 comma 0 is it clear right and we can choose any point in the x y plane now how do we get p x comma y is it clear right we know that because we are already familiar with the coordinate geometry point can be uniquely determined is it clear right say for example you can write down a point like this p x comma y right then you can join o and p p is one point you can join you may call it as an it is a op and it represents a factor right or sometimes we call it as a factor op is called position factor of the point p with respect to o is it clear right or you can define a position factor in this form as usual it is an x axis y axis o is the origin is it clear you can take a point a in x y plane with respect to o so o a is one position factor is it clear and similarly o b is another position factor and it can be denoted by a letter b is it clear or o c is the third position factor it can be denoted by either a or factor b or factor c right so like that now you can define a position factor then you may ask is it possible to define a position vector along the x axis along the y axis because I have mentioned in x y plane only is it clear yes it is possible to uh, define a position vector along the x axis or along the y axis we will come to know very shortly is it clear or uh, you may consider an example like this the displacement from the initial point p1 x comma y to the terminal point p2 x plus 4 comma y plus 3 in figure a is 4 units to the right and 3 units up it means so it will move 4 units along the x axis 3 units along the y axis how do you write you can write down like this p2 x plus 4 comma y plus 3 is it clear and this is the position vector x axis y axis a is a vector it can be denoted by p 4 comma 3 so this vector is denoted by a right so now i wanted to say the what, what i wanted to say that these two vectors are equivalent is it clear so these two vectors are equivalent to the displacement vector p1 p2 this is the displacement vector from this point to this point right so now we want to define unit vectors in two dimensions as it clear let i and j are unit vectors in a plane along the positive direction of x and y axis they are the position vectors of the points 1 comma 0 and 0 comma 1 as it clear it means so this is 0 x axis and y axis so you can take a point at this point is it clear you can find out the coordinates of this point right now i want to take this red line is one unit as it clear y coordinate on x axis is 0 so this can be written as a 1 comma 0 and similarly on the y axis x coordinate is 0 y coordinate is 1 is it clear so this red line represents a unit vector i this red line along the y axis represents z means these two are unit vectors how do you represent unit vectors either in this form or in this form is it clear how do you represent a unit vector along the y axis either z or in this form is it clear right so now we are able to define unit vectors along x axis along y axis as it clear we are also able to define a position vector along x axis y axis or in x y plane right in the similar way now you want to obtain components of a vector in two dimensions right so let i and j are unit vectors in a plane along the positive direction of x and y axis let p x y be any point in the x y plane then op is called the 
position vector of the point P and it is written as a how do you write a? you can write on R right draw P m perpendicular to x axis join O P now O m is equal to you can take this distance is equal to x right this distance is equal to y and this vector is denoted by R is it clear right. So, what I have written here now I want to find out the value of O m O m is x into i as a clear and similarly along with the y axis you can take or you can find out the value of this factor m p as a clear. So, y into z m p is equal to y into z. So, therefore, O p is equal to right from the triangle O p is equal to O m plus m p that is equal to I hope you will get x i plus y z can be noted down. Sometimes you want to calculate uh, the position vector of the point P is uh, denoted by R is equal to P is equal to x i plus y z. You want to calculate length. How do you calculate length? <coughs> Sorry. How do you calculate length? Every positioned vector can be resolved into its components. <coughs> Sorry. Every positioned vector can be <coughs> resolved <coughs> into its components along x and y axis. <coughs> you can write on modulus of R that is equal to length of OP, <coughs> OM square, MP square that is equal to x square plus y square. <coughs> so, components of a vector in three dimensions. So friends, I hope now you are able to find out uh, components in uh, two dimensions. In the similar way, how do you find out uh, components in three dimensions? <coughs> Let us take the points A, B, C. Is it clear? I hope uh, whenever we talk about uh, three dimensions, you no, know, we should observe any corner of the room. Is it clear? So because you may call one. Uh, corner as x axis is it clear it is an intersection of two walls right say for example you assume that it is a floor and this is one wall intersection of these two walls is this corner you may call it as an it is a x axis is it clear and similarly again it is a floor and this is one wall intersection of these two walls you may call it as an its corner and it is a y axis is it clear so these two are walls intersection of these two walls you may call it as an it is an z axis right so now we want to consider three points what are those three points namely a b c right i want to take these points on the x axis y axis and z axis is it clear so i want to take a point on the x axis is it clear so what are the coordinates of this point 1 comma 0 comma 0 it means that uh, in the x axis uh, you want to take a red line no? it is one unit <coughs> right so other two axis uh, remains 0 y axis is 0 z axis is uh, 0 that is why you will get uh, a 1 0 a 0 <coughs> and similarly on the y axis uh, <coughs> sorry on the y axis uh, you can take uh, a point b is it clear so it is it should be 0 1 0 here it is printed that uh, 1 <coughs> actually it is wrong 0 1 0 and similarly you can take a point on the z axis as okay, you may call it as an c 0 0 1 x axis is 0 y axis is 0 z axis is 1 right <coughs> on the x y and uh, z axis so you want to calculate uh, so modulus of uh, these vectors o a is 1 o b is 1 similarly o c is also 1 the vectors o a o b and o c <coughs> each having a magnitude 1 are called unit vectors along the axis o x o y and o z respectively and are denoted by i j k so it means these red lines you no know, now i want to denote 
these red lines as a unit vectors along x axis, along y axis, along z axis. Is it clear? And how do we denote? We denote these vectors by using the letters i, small i, small j, small k. Is it clear? So, I hope now you are uh, able to define uh, unit vectors uh, in <coughs> two dimensions uh, as well as uh, three dimensions. Is it clear? Right? So, you can consider <coughs> a cube as I have mentioned. So, this is an x axis and this is an y axis right? and z axis. Is it clear? I hope you can observe x o y is called x o y plane or simply we call it as an this plane as a x y plane. Is it clear? And similarly, y o z or this plane is called z y plane. Is it clear? And similarly, so this plane x o z is called x z plane. Is it clear? So, now I want to define a unit vectors. right? So, this along the x axis you may call it as an i, along the y axis you may call it as an j, along the z axis you may call it as an k. <coughs> and uh, we are also define components along x, y, z. right? So, along x axis x into i, along y axis y into z, along z axis you can define z into k. Is it clear? Then you can take a point in the space how we have defined a point in the plane. No, in the similar way you can define a point in the space. So, that is why you will get uh, three coordinates namely x, y, z. It means uh, you can measure the distance uh, from the x axis, y axis uh, and z axis. Is it clear? I hope uh, you will get uh, a p x comma y comma z three coordinates. Right? In the similar way on x, o, y plane I will take a point I will call it as an P 1. Is it clear? Then you may call it as an uh, you can join P and P 1. Is it clear? And this line P 2 P 1 is perpendicular to the sorry is parallel to the uh, z axis. <coughs> the line P 1 to P is parallel to the z axis. All right? I hope you may call it as an P P 1 factor P P 1 is equal to z k. Right? And uh, similarly, you can consider O S, right? O S is parallel to Q into P 1. Is it clear? So, this is Y Z, right? And similarly, O Q you may call it as an X into I, right? So, you can write down uh, these uh, things, right? So, you, what I wanted to say that uh, consider the position vector O P of a point P X Y Z as shown in the diagram. P 1 be the put of the perpendicular from P on the x o y plane. We thus see that p 1 p is parallel to z axis i j k are the unit vectors along x y z axis respectively. So, by the definition of the coordinate uh, coordinates of a point p, we have p 1 p is equal to or that is equal to z k we have already defined now. It follows that o p 1 is equal to right. It means we want to calculate o p 1. So, what is the value of O P 1. How do you calculate O P 1? So, you know the triangle law. So, you can use is it clear? So, this length is known. O Q is known. O Q is equal to what? X into I. Just now I said that Q P 1 is parallel to Y into Z and we want to calculate O P 1. So, O P 1 is equal to O Q plus Q into P 1 that is equal to. So, you get X into I plus y into z. So, that is the value of O p 1 as clear x i plus y z and similarly, so we want to calculate the value of this vector, the value of this vector. So, O p is equal to. <coughs> so, how do we calculate? So, once again you can use the triangle law. So, O p is equal to O p 1 plus p 1 into p as clear right. So, O p is equal to you want to calculate O p 1 plus p p 1. Just now we have calculated the value of O p 1. So, O p 1 is equal to what? So, O p 1 is equal to x i plus y z. 
that is clear and P1 to P is I have mentioned it is parallel to so R no it is Z into K. So, now O P is equal to O P 1 plus P 1 into P. So, therefore, X plus sorry X into I plus Y into J plus Z into K. So, that is the value of O P or factor R is equal to is clear. So, components in three dimensions are X I plus Y J plus Z K is clear. I hope we are able to find out components in two dimensions as well as in three dimensions as clear and sometimes we have to calculate length of the factor as clear how do we calculate length of the factor as clear say for example r is the given factor x i plus y z plus z k right this form of factor is called component form here x, y and z are called the scalar components right of R and x, i, y, z, z, k are called factor components R along the respective axis. How do you calculate length modulus of R is equal to length of O p is equal to square root of x square, y square, z square is it clear. So, for example, this is the given vector and if they ask you to calculate length of this factor, simply you can observe the coefficients of x sorry coefficient of i coefficient of z coefficient of k i hope we can find out x square plus y square plus z square so that is the length of the factor right <coughs> or we can say that if a is one factor or a and b are any two given factors as clear right so how do we calculate components as clear right or how do we uh, add these two factors in case of components as a clear. So, for example, they have given A is equal to A 1 i plus A 2 j plus A 3 k and similarly, B is equal to B 1 i plus B 2 j plus B 3 k respectively. Then the sum or resultant of the factors A and B is given by. So, now I want to add these two factors A plus B is equal to simply you can add A 1 plus B 1 into I A 2 plus B 2 into Z plus A 3 into B 3 K is clear. So, I hope you will get the resultant of two hectares right. In the similar way the difference of the difference of the hectares A and B. So, now we have added two hectares right. Now, we want to find out difference of two hectares. How do you find out difference A minus B is equal to a 1 minus B 1 into I as a clear A 1 is known B 1 is known you can find out difference of these numbers A 2 is known B 2 is known you can find out difference of these number into Z plus A 3 into B 3 as a clear and similarly the factors A and B are equal if and only if. So, we will say that these two factors are equal. So, when we say that these two factors are equal if it satisfies this condition. What is the condition? If A 1 is equal to B 1, A 1 is known, B 1 is there. If these two are same, is it clear? Similarly, A 2 is known, B 2 is there. If these two are same, A 3 is also known, B 3 is also known. If these two are equal, it means if A 1 is equal to B 1, A 2 is equal to B 2 and A 3 is equal to B 3. In that case, we can say that so both of the factors are equal. As clear, and sometimes we have to multiply two factors. As clear, right? So by any scalar lambda, how do you multiply lambda into a is equal to here a means what? A into a one i plus a two j plus a three k. You can write down lambda into a one i plus lambda into a two j plus lambda into a three k. It means we have to multiply a number to the first component, second component, third component. As clear. So, for example, now I want to multiply this factor by 2. How do you multiply? 2 into a 1 i plus 2 into a 2 j plus 2 into a 3 k. So, like that you can multiply uh, by a scalar. Right. So, friends in the next period, so we shall discuss about some more uh, component problem. It, mean, it means, so now I want to solve some uh, numerical examples about these laws. Thank you. Thank you very much.